Well, 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 hello again everyone and welcome to yet another video on flesh and blood. Now, I have a surprise for you again today, but before we get to that, I just wanted to address a few questions, let's say, that I get on my channel uh, with people making comments and me replying to them and answering their questions. Um, some people have asked me, will I be able to play with this global pandemic going on? Will I be able to play online at some point, like something like uh, Magic Arena, for example? No, not in the near future, I am afraid not. It will take a certain amount of time before that happens. But anyhow, I've heard of a group of people trying to get something going on uh, Discord. Um, for some of you, you will know that Discord is basically a platform that's used by gamers to chat, to uh, exchange ideas and to play games. Well, they're trying to get something going which would allow players to face each other on that platform. So we'll see. Now, I've also had the question of what to do with my opened unopened, I should say, boxes of Welcome to Wraith, first edition, uh, alpha actually, and first edition for the uh, Arcane Rising. Should I open them, not open them, sell them, not sell them? Well, let me give you my take on this. First of all, I'll tell you what I did. I got my hands on six boxes of each. As you've seen in the first videos on this channel, I have opened two of each and kept four. Um, so do I think prices will go down? No, um, because some people think that with the unlimited versions coming, prices will go down, obviously. Well, that's what would be obvious if it weren't for one fact. People remember all too well that, um, you know, how many of us are saying, I wish I could have been into this new game right from the start. And uh, we all have magic in, in mind. 25 years ago, if we would have gotten our hands on alpha and beta versions and so on and so forth. So people have that too much in their mind to, to think that, um, well, for, for prices basically to go down. And although the unlimited versions will bring us those cards once again, we will have exactly the same cards, except for the cold foils, um, it's not a question of not having the cards. It's a question of rarity of the first sets and their, their availability in the future. So although we have equivalent cards coming, I do not believe that prices will go, will go down. Now, will they stabilize? Maybe. Nobody knows the future, but that's my take on it. Um, and then I also get the question, do you think this game will be a great hit? Well, of course I do. Look at what's happening right now, um, the kind of uh, traction it's getting. You know, it came out at the end of 2019, only had a few months before the global pandemic came around, and yet it's gaining this much traction within a global pandemic. I mean, yes, I think it's definitely here to stay, and I definitely think that it's going to be a great game in the future. Now, what's the surprise for today? Guess what? A fourth box opening of Crucible of War. So let's get to it right away. What do you think? So, as we get going on this fourth box of Crucible of War, fourth box opening in the last four or five days, I believe, we will not mention the L word. You know why? I kind of don't want to jinx myself. I've been saying it all along and uh, never got one, so let's try a different way. What do we have here? All right, our first seven cards are the seven common cards. Hit and run, once again, the commons are identified by a gray circle within which we have a C to indicate common. So, first seven cards, as I was saying. If you have watched my other videos, you will have uh, seen most of these cards. So one more. And first rare is Mandible Claw. A rare card, a brute weapon card, tax for three. And there you go. And what do we have for our second rare or more? Reinforce the line. There you go. And our foil is Crane Dance, a rare foil. All right, we're on our way. Now, some people in the uh, comment section of my channel have been asking many questions, like I was telling you at the beginning of this video. And one of the other ones was, uh, what should I buy? I mean, uh, obviously, depending on your budget, the more 
I would say the more you, your budget, the more you buy. <laughs> but given the choice, okay, let's go with our first rare pitfall trap. There you go, a ranger defense reaction and towering titan. How about our foil? Flying kick. Oh, nice art. I love it. A common. So, yeah, there's two things to be careful. Well, first of all, I would want to have both of the initial collections, obviously. But um, if you... Like, this collection right now here that we're looking at, Crucible of War, is a supplemental set. So, you will need, basically, to have the cards of the uh, the two first sets before you even consider buying this one. So, if you're buying three boxes, fine. You buy a box of each. Let's go see. Benji, the Piercing Wind. Rare. And Remorseless. There we go with our first Majestic. Ranger action. Attacks for five. Defense for three. Remorseless. And our foil is Riled Up. A common card. Yeah, so if your budget allows you to basically buy boxes of each set, go right ahead. But uh, you have to realize, like I was saying, that the first two sets are the ones that have the four heroes each around which you build your, your decks. And this set here is a supplemental set which allows you to complete your decks with, uh, with cards that you can work around with. Snapback, Blessing, Hit and Run. All right, what do we have as a first Barraging Bighorn we've seen before? And Crane Dance again, a rare, and our foil is Suckcliffe's Research Notes. There you go for a common. And moving right along. Other people have asked me, uh, okay, well, how do you... We're, ha we're getting our in unlimited sets uh, in a few weeks. How do you... How will you be able to distinguish between sets? I mean, they're the same cards, so I'll get that... I'll get to that in a second here. Get through our seven common cards. And Mandible Claw again as our first rare. Do we have a bonus here in the second rare position? Poison the Tips. There you go. Second Majestic. And Foil. Soul Bead Strike. A common card. So there you go. And let's continue right along. Yeah, so basically, as you've seen in this set, they started to identify the rarities by using color codes. So that's the very first difference you'll see between the, uh, let's say, the uh, Welcome to Wrath, Wraith, I should say, uh, Alpha set and the Arcane Rising Alpha set, which did not have the color code, uh, which the unlimited sets will have. So that's the first way to distinguish. Cindering Foresight is our first rare. And what do we have here? Find Center. Oh, there you go. I didn't know this card. So turns out it's a Majestic, our third one already. And Swing Fist Think Later is a common card. There you go. Obviously, there is the difference of not getting common uh, cold foils, I should say, in the unlimited versions. There's also the fact that um, the uh, code for the name, as a name here of the um, of the set, uh, WTR for Welcome to Wrath, um, unlimited version will probably be identified maybe with a U at the end of it. I don't know yet, but maybe to differentiate to, uh, between the two sets. Anyway, there's plenty of ways to distinguish between the cards, basically. Crush the Weak. Okay, Dauntless is our first rare. And... Barraging Bighorn again is our rare. What do we have as a foil? Springboard Somersault. And what is this? Oh, it's a rare card. So our first rare foil. There you go. And then if you've got a kind of a larger budget, I would go... People are asking me, do you have like... Uh, do you have a law of diminishing returns? What I mean by that is... At what point are you opening, cracking boxes and obtaining, getting cards that you already have? Well, I can tell you from a little bit... Okay, let's have a look at these first. Rushing Rivers are first. Rare and 
Oh, Dread Triptych? What is this? Uh, there you go. <laughs> Ken, Fourth Majestic. My God, they're all at the top of this box so far. And Sutcliffe's research notes. There you go with a common foil. Yeah, so basically I've uh, diminishing returns. What I mean by that is that you reach a point where you're getting all the cards, right? And doubles, triples, quadruples, and so on and so forth. Well, I, find out, I found out that two boxes... With one box, you get all the cards, mostly all the cards that are common and many of the rares. But the thing is, is that you don't, um, you know, there are three pitch values for each card, right? So each card comes in three different versions. You want Crane Dance, first rare, and Dauntless, foil, Fame Death. There you go. Uh, not only... A majestic, but a majestic foil. My God, we're up to five already, including one foil. Oh, well. So far, so good. Remember the L word, though? <laughs> so I found out that, uh, yeah, you're getting most of them, but I want basically three copies of each uh, pitch value, including the rares. And I found out that with two boxes, you practically get there. So, in my view, the third box might be like the, you really have gotten to the law of diminishing returns. It's not worth opening a third box, in my opinion. If, you know, you just want to have the minimum amount of cards. Talishar, the Lost Prince. Okay, two rares. And so, okay, a comment. Okay, for some reason I thought this might be another Majestic. But yeah. So, basically... One box to get mostly all the cards, two boxes to have your three copies of each, including the rares, and basically a third box would allow you to, yeah, get more of your missing cards, obviously, but uh, is it worth it? Mm, I would say not quite, so my recommendation would be for two boxes. Reinforce the line, there you go, for our first rare, and promise of plenty as a foil, uh, well actually, sorry, as a second rare, and our foil, oh, it was a nice one, magnetic shockwave, whoa, 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 what is this, majestic again, there you go, for our second majestic foil, well that's basically what you're supposed to get in a whole booster box, so if we get any more of those, it'll be a bonus, I guess, <laughs> there you go. So, moving right along, and then if your actually budget is uh, to buy even more, well, you can keep the rest as sealed, depending on what type of, uh, you know, if you're a collector, a collector player, or just a player, all that goes into consideration, obviously. Data, doll, my god, okay, she's, oof, that's a rare card, and rune blood barrier. Majestic again! Oh my god, this is like the sixth Majestic! Oh, we're gonna have anything left? And Soul Bead Strike. Common card foil. Yeah, so most people that have, you know, higher limit budgets would go like six or four, let's say, a case. Open two, keep two. Or go to six, open two, keep four. That kind of thing. All right, Sutcliffe's research notes. Okay, that's a common. Tripwire Trap is the first rare. And what do we have? Rock Slide Trap is our second rare. And we have here a nice Dauntless Foil rare. We've seen this card before, but not in the foil version. Nice. All right, so now with about 10 packs or so to go, I've made a little cleanup here. We have already, look at this, five regular mythics and two foil mythics. So let's carry right along and see if we continue to get lucky. All right, so another question I've had on the, uh, on the channel, here we go through our uh, comments first, is a question about the next set coming in Q1 uh, of 2021, and that is Monarch. Here we go with our first rare, High Speed Impact, and Dauntless again, rare, and what, what's our foil here? What's our foil? Oh, Gambler's Gloves, is this our cold foil? Is this our cold foil? And is it a Majestic? I think we have it. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, 
our eighth Majestic already, and this one is coiled foil on top of it. My, oh my. Let's put this right here so we don't miss it. And, well, why don't I already put these rares here and these commons here. So, back to a Monarch. People are, are asking, will there also be like kind of two editions like we've seen in the uh, first two sets? Meaning we have like a Monarch first edition and then we have a Monarch Unlimited. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you right now that your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Got you, didn't I? First rare, high speed impact and Cindering Foresight as our second rare. And what's our foil? What do we have here? Meet and greet, a common card. There you go. We'll continue on here. Then there's the question of the life totals of our heroes with which we begin. There are heroes that have 40 life totals and the young versions have 20. So what are they used for and when do we, you know, see each one of them? All right, here. So, rare, first rare, Towering Titan and Mulverian Skies. What do we have as our foil? Do we have anything special? Bittering Thorns. There you go, common. Well, basically, the 20 life are used in limited, okay? And the 40 life would typically be used in constructed where you have decks of 80 plus cards. Now, as you know, for those who are, who are familiar with Magic, Limited means that uh, we play basically sealed and traditional draft. And the games are a little shorter, so that's how we play in tournament play or in uh, Flying Kick. Rushing River is our first rare. And Zephyr Needle, that's pretty pointy, pointy guy for a rare and such. Cliff's research notes as a common foil. Yeah, so typically uh, the Friday Night Magics or the, the launches we have, you know, when it has a, a launch weekend for a new collection, a new set. Well, draft, basically. It all comes down to draft or traditional uh, or sealed, basically. For the 20 life. Cindering Foresight, we've seen this one. Rare. Dauntless, we've seen it again also. And Emerging Dominance. Oh, big guy. Common Foil. So what do we have left here? We do have... Let's see. Six more packs. We are up to our expected eight Mythics. Uh, mythics. Majestics. Here I go again. So let's go see if we can get some bonus cards here. All right, here we go. High speed impact, our third copy already. In this barraging bighorn, also our third copy. Those are two rares. And our foil is the workshop. There you go, the workshop. I don't even try to pronounce the first word of that. So all bets are on. Will I finally get something that resembles the L card? How about the F card? <laughs> See, I'm not being too greedy. I'm still not getting it. All right. Through our seven first cards, which are the commons. And Sledge of Anvilheim is our first rare. Along with, what do we have here? Towering Titan, again a rare. And our foil... Out for Blood. Common Foil. Well, we're just down to four more packs, ladies and gentlemen, of this fourth box opening of Crucible of War. We'll be opening more, but not in the next week or so, or next few weeks, because we will be concentrating our next box openings on the unlimited version of Return to Wraith. First rare here, Promise of Plenty. Our second one, oh, what's that? Visiotronic model. So that's a basically a mechanologist equipment. Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, voila! We have beat our record and obtained a ninth majestic in this box. 
and our foil is a Dauntless Rare. So, basically a sixth Majestic right over here. And on to the last three packs. Yeah, so we have one week left. We'll be receiving our unlimited version of Welcome to Wrath, Wraith. There you go. <laughs> Still making that mistake. And Zen State. Hmm, a rare. Oh, I like the contour here, but that's the Mechanologist contour. That's right. We can recognize that from far. So two rares and the workshop as a common foil. I will be getting quite a few of those uh, boxes, actually. I'm going to be getting cases of those, meaning that I'm going to be opening two full cases in next on, during next weekend, actually. So don't miss that. Two full cases, cases should get us some legendaries finally rushing river is our first rare Ag absorption dome hmm oh my goodness do we have a 10th majestic in this box wow we can expect everything anything now from our last pack down there and what is our foil foreboding bolt common foil yeah last pack ladies and gentlemen but we have gotten our 10, 10 Majestics, basically. Here I go. Make sure they're all there for you to see. And a last pack. So as I was saying, I am really hoping that with two cases, I will be getting that legendary card that elo has elapsed me, eloped me, I should say, for so long. Out for blood. Push forward. Flying kick. Okay, this is our last chance. Crane Dance, first rare. How about something different now? Pitfall Trap? No. Rare? Never know. Legendary can be foil. So let's have a look. Cindering Foresight. There you go. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The fourth box of this collection. Let so me... before we go until our next Flesh and Blood video, let's just go over a little bit of a review of what we got here. Definitely by far my best box out of the four Crucible of Wars, which we have opened over the past few days. So a whole bunch of common cards, obviously. 41 rares, seven Majestics, and then within the um, foils here, 24 foils that we get in the 24 packs, obviously, we have 16 commons, four, five, I should say, rares, two Majestics, and one cold foil. So there you have it, a total of See, two, three, this is also Majestic, by the way. So a total of 10 Majestics. This is just absolutely great and really happy. Until our next video, ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourselves and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.